If you already have momentum in your life, if you're already heading towards your goals, you've already destroyed your limiting beliefs and your addictions, then this is not the video for you. This video is for two types of people. The first, if you're stuck in a rut, if you're finding yourself in an endless cycle of pointless pain and self-sabotage, then you need the hard reset protocol to break that cycle as a pattern interrupt and set you on a new path. And the second group of people is those people who have a path but they're just going too slow or perhaps they have lost their direction along the way. If you've lost your focus and your purpose, then the hard reset protocol is gonna help you get back on track and reignite the flame that kept you going in the first place. Do you know that quote, if you get 1% every day, at the end of the year, you're 37 times better? This is the wrong way of looking at things. Yes, it's a mathematical truth, but it has no relevance to your life. You see, progress in life is not a linear function, nor is it an exponential function. It's more of a step function. It's very untidy. You can, and I have, and hundreds of people have, changed the trajectory of their life based on one event or one day. The hard reset protocol forces a step function, forces a divergence in your life. It gives you a chance to stop, reassess, and then move. Imagine if you're a Spanish explorator lost in the woods of the Amazon forest trying to find the golden city of El Dorado. And you've been walking in circles, you're lost and there's a pebble in your boot. So what should you do right now? Should you just continue to walk in circles hoping for the best, in pain, or should you stop, take out the pebble from your boot, look at your maps, take stock of your resources, chart a path towards the goal and make a deliberate move forward? Obviously, that's what you should do. But most people will go about their lives in pain, going around in circles without taking stock of their resources, without taking a pause, without looking at themselves objectively and charting a course for the best possible outcome. This is why I created the Hard Reset Protocol. I created this years ago actually. I've been using it for years. I've created by looking at the great minds of history. I've looked at the psychology of the human brain. I've looked at military history. I've looked at culture and tradition to come up with the ideal Hard Reset protocol through which you can change the trajectory of your life. But I will give you a word of caution. This is not going to be for everybody. And even if you do manage to do it, you should absolutely not do it more than two to three times per year. This is a powerful tool which is only to be used very strategically. Before we get started, I give you the exact actionable steps. There are five rules that you must follow. Rule number one, you have to take this seriously and you have to be intentional about it. Otherwise, the brain rewiring is not going to happen and you're just wasting your time. Rule number two, I've already said you can only do this twice or thrice, maybe maximum four times per year. Number three, you have to set aside time for this, at least five hours, ideally the whole day. Number four, you must complete every part of this protocol in order for it to be effective. Number five, you must be in a completely fasted state for you to do this. You will have no food for the duration of the hard reset protocol. You can, of course, have electrolytes, you can have water, and I have a video talking about electrolytes, but you cannot have any solid food. The hard reset protocol is four steps, and each step has some sub steps within it. I'm gonna give you the exact instructions in the description below. The first step is for you to buzz your hair. I already know you're having resistance even hearing that thought. You've already decided you're not gonna do it, you're gonna go to step two, three, and four. But hear me out very carefully. What if every military on the face of the earth from the beginning of history insist that their trainees have their heads shaved? From the hoplites of Sparta to the hastati of Rome, from the phalangites of Alexander to the modern US Army. All trainees always have their heads shaved or trimmed or buzzed. And what if every single monastery of any religion insists that their acolytes have their heads shaved? Why in the movie Fight Club does Tyler Durden insist that his space monkeys have their heads buzzed? Space monkey. To some extent, this is because in all these organizations, you have to earn the right to have hair. You have to earn the right to look good and express yourself. It's because you're submitting to yourself to a time of rewiring and transformation. The only people exempt from this rule are Sikhs and women. If you want to do the hard reset protocol, you start with buzzing your hair. You need to destroy your vanity and you need to destroy your ego. Now you can do this yourself if you have a pair of flippers or you can go to the barber, I don't care. You're doing this for spiritual, metaphysical and practical reasons. This is not the time for you to look your best and woo all the women and flirt with all the chicks and all this. This is not the time for that. This is the time for you to get to work. 
And another added bonus is if you watched my hair care video, you know that there's a benefit to buzzing your hair and then resetting the cycle and not using shampoo. And instead of using shampoo, you should be using a non-toxic, non-drying option, a herbal option, which I'll link in my Amazon store below. Now we go on to step two. But you have to understand, you have to do step one. Step one is not optional. You have to buzz your hair. And you only go to step two once you're done with step one. But of course, you can listen to the whole video and then enact the hard reset protocol. Step two, you're going to bring to life your heaven and your hell. What you'll do is you'll put all your devices in airplane mode. You'll clear your desk. The only thing on your desk is a piece of paper and a pen to write with. You're gonna sit down and stare at the wall in front of you. This is not meditation. I don't want you to meditate. This is not the time for mindfulness and spirituality. This is a time for you to really suffer and feel the pain of boredom. Feel the pain of negative emotions and thoughts in your head. Let the demons begin their offensive, for you are in control. You are chained to your desk. You will not leave this place until this task is done. You can stand up, you can move a little bit just for the blood circulation, but you are not going to move away from your desk until this task is done. As you're sitting down on your desk with your piece of paper and your pen, the negative thoughts and emotions are going to come at you. You will think thoughts of how worthless you are. You will think thoughts of how you deserve to end up lonely. You will think thoughts of why not just go and watch porn. You have to understand, you might be sitting here for an hour. You might be sitting for two hours. You're going to let these negative emotions seep through your brain, saturate your brain. The demons of your brain are extremely manipulative. They're gonna find the angles of your brain. They're gonna find the way to apply leverage in order to make you move and do something, anything other than face them head on. They'll tell you to be productive. They'll say, you're just sitting down and you're wasting your time. Why not go and reply to the emails? Why not reply to those DMs? Why not make money? Why not do this and that? Why not organize your life? Why not create the timetable, the schedule for the rest of your week? So many things that you could be doing, but you're just sitting here. If that doesn't work, they're gonna hit you with the pictures of you know past girlfriends, regrets, things you fumbled, businesses that didn't go anywhere, arguments that you've had with your parents. All the negative garbage must come out for you to purge. I told you to get a piece of paper and a pen, but I haven't told you to start writing yet. So listen, you're gonna be sitting down, you're going to let these negative thoughts come to you. And then when these negative emotions have reached their crescendo, that's when you begin your offensive. That's when you use your pen and your paper as your tools against this enemy. You see, I told you not to use a laptop. I told you to use a piece of paper and a pen. The reason for this is I want your concentration not to be diffused among all your fingers on a keyboard. I want it to be concentrated and packed into the tip of that pen. And when you start writing, you are framing your future. This is what you're gonna write. You're gonna have two pages. One, you title as hell and the other as heaven. First, we start in hell. You are going to give life to your hell. All the negative thoughts that you've had, all the bad futures that you can potentially see, I want you to write down your worst nightmares and worst fears. Make it as detailed and graphic and emotionally painful as possible. This is not going to be easy. I know because I just recently did this. You can see from my hair that I've already gone through a hard reset protocol myself. My hell is failing this gambit this gamble I've taken on making a YouTube business. My hell is not being able to retire my parents because I decided to take a gamble and go for YouTube instead of my fancy engineering job. My hell is being alone, never having a brotherhood of like-minded young men. My hell is never finding the right girl to start a family with. My hell is never breaking free from the great game and always being a pawn of corporations and government. I write these things in extreme detail. I want to be anxious about this. I want to feel fear. I want to feel the shame that I would feel if I was to go to my parents and say, I couldn't succeed in my business because I was too unfocused to do the effort. I want to feel the loneliness that I would feel if I was to never have a brotherhood of like-minded men. And once I'm done with creating my hell, I get up off my desk, move around a little bit, get my circulation back, I come back, I have my pen. I remind myself that the forces of hell can do me no harm, but the forces of heaven are with me. I remind myself that the smallest flame can dispel any darkness. I remind myself that in my life, I am the light in the dark, that I am order amidst chaos. And I remind myself that my character is my destiny. 
And now I write my vision of heaven. I write what happens when everything goes according to plan. I write of a golden future. This YouTube channel has reached tens of thousands of lives. I have rid the minds of hundreds and thousands of young men and women of psychological operations. I've purged their bodies of toxins and xenoestrogens. I have cut the puppet strings of corporations and government. I've launched my private community the country club and I'm teaching hundreds of people everything there is to know about health. I'm giving them a classical education which they were denied in the modern education system. I'm even teaching them how to set up their own synthesizer business on YouTube so that they can be financially free. And as my business grows, I'm able to retire my parents. I'm able to live a comfortable life. And maybe at some point I find a pretty girl, save her from her soul sucking nine to five and whisk her off to Tuscany. But whatever your vision of hell and heaven is, that's what you write down. Be detailed, be articulate, be even poetic, be dramatic. You are a human being filled with life and creativity. Let that be shown on these pages. Does your vision of heaven include travel? Write down the places you want to visit. Write down how it would be to be in those places. The temperature, the smell of street food in the air. If you want to meet a woman, describe her the sway of her hips, the color of her eyes. Make this real. The more real you can make this, the more emotional resonance it's going to have with you and more power the hard reset protocol is going to have overall in your life. Once you're done with writing of your hell and heaven, you're ready to move on to step number three of the hard reset protocol. Now, just before I go on to that, if you want a guideline as to how much you should write, you should write at least one page for hell one page for heaven, ideally more. But that doesn't mean you have to write a whole ass novel, right? Maybe one to two pages is what you should be aiming for. Now, step number three is the rules. I'm going to give you five rules that you must follow and you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take another piece of paper and you're gonna write these rules word for word what I'm saying. Rule one, I reject my addictions for my dreams are more important than any temptation. Rule number two, I will not numb myself with entertainment for I have no time for mediocrity. Rule number three, I will meditate for 30 minutes every day so that my mind is worthy of wisdom. Rule number four, I will engage in at least 30 minutes of exercise per day so that my body is worthy of my mind. Rule number five, I will read these rules and my vision of hell and heaven every morning to remind me of what's at stake. These are the five golden rules that are gonna set you apart from everybody else. Most people don't have any rules in their life. You have these five rules. You adhere to these five rules and you tell me if they doesn't make a change in your life. So very briefly, I'm gonna explain exactly what the rules are. Rule number one says no addictions. So no porn, no drugs, no alcohol, none of that. And if you need help with breaking addictions, then I have a video on exactly how to do that. Rule two says no entertainment. So no TikTok, no Instagram, no YouTube. Now, you can use YouTube for educational purposes, but you have to install the extensions, the browser extensions, which Hamza is going to recommend in this video, which I'm going to link in the description, which basically makes it such that YouTube is only for educational purposes. Rule three says meditation for 30 minutes. This doesn't have to be 30 minutes in one stretch. It can be broken up into parts throughout the day, but it does have to add up to 30 minutes overall. And if you don't know how to meditate, that's fine. Just literally sit, just sit, don't even meditate, but you have to do this for 30 minutes. And of course, I will come out with a meditation guide soon enough so you'll know how to do meditation in a very small amount of time. Maybe if you want to hit the bell button to be notified, you can do that. Rule four says to do exercise for at least 30 minutes. This can be anything, weightlifting, running, BJJ, I don't care. Rule five says you must read your rules and read your description of hell and heaven every single day in the morning. This is actually a very, very underrated rule. You can do all this emotional work, all this mental effort to create these documents. So you see, these are your foundational documents. But if you don't read them and you don't have them in your mind every day, there's no point in putting in all this effort and time. I want you to treat these documents as a, an irreplaceable asset. This is not just a piece of paper with writing on it. You have put your heart and soul and imagination into this. So every morning when you read these painful words of hell and these amazing, inspiring words of heaven, it has to have an emotional resonance with you. And that's what's gonna get you to perform at the highest level every day. You have to read it, especially when you don't want to. Some days you're gonna feel so motivated that you don't feel like you need to. This is a trick played by your mind, read it. And some days you're gonna be so depressed and inactive that you don't want to read it. It's painful to even read it. I don't care, you still have to read it. And finally, step four. Step four is gonna take you the least amount of time, but it's going to be the most important step. You see, your step four is a risk. Step four, your honor is at stake. You see, honor, it's a sum total of all the promises that you've made and kept, not only to others, but also to yourself. And today you're gonna to put that honor 
at stake. At this point, you're going to have two documents. You're going to have your hell and heaven vision, and you're going to have your rules document. At the bottom of your rules document, you're going to write the exact words which I'm going to give you. You're going to write, the next 12 weeks are going to be a time of great opportunity or the beginning of a hellish existence. Even though I will be tested, I will not be found wanting. I will follow the five golden rules. And this upon my honor, I swear. And at the bottom of that, you're going to put your signature. You see, this is a binding document. This is a written pact with yourself. If you break this, you're breaking this upon your honor. If you sign this, there's no going back. You have to hold true to your word.